a poster? Oh, no. Do you want one? This is awesome. Christian sign right there. there. It's already ready. No, yeah. no big deal. And then this might be a weird one request, one? but it's a fairy tale one request. One yeah. Can you respond to uh, Happy offering you a fish? Sure. Be a man. That's it. That's all Elfman ever says is be a man to everybody. Yep. Although just everyone around here thought that I just yelled at you for not being a man. <laughs> <laughs> everyone just looking at me like, what the hell did he just say? Why did he just yell be a man to that guy? Um, sorry, it's a quote. It was a quote. This is for Carlos. Oh, hey, Carlos. No, no problem. I'm definitely gonna make his day. I hope you watch get home. If, he, if he's like, I really want. I would love to see a video. If he's like, he's like really you pissed off. You took my video and touched it. Well, go, Those go, are go, awesome, you. by the way. Thank you. Here you want me to sign on, on the Vegeta? Oh, I already did. Yeah, you already did. Yeah, no, Woo, it's me, I'm me. ahead of the game. Hi. How are how you? How you doing, dude? Good. How are you? Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? I'm awesome. We I drove very far stuff. to come so to see you guys. Where'd you drive from? Uh, he drove oh, man, from Pittsburgh. I, I drove from Cleveland. Spot. Oh, gosh. I'm so okay. sorry. Uh, thank okay, you so, so much. We flew, flew, um, and then you have my we flew yes. from <laughs> Dallas. Over on the other side. I'm wow. so sorry. I can't say that yeah, was that yeah, hard. Should I write like sorry? Can you say something fun from Vegeta? Do you want me to? Vegeta. As a joke? No. Men in pink. How bizarre. Seven women. Bring me a dragon cloth at once. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have a lot of respect for someone who drives seven and a half hours to meet yeah. me, so and, uh, I appreciate yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Can you say, uh, I am the Super Saiyan Son Goku? I can't do it like in full on voice because it's fine. like, you know. Just, I'm Super Saiyan Son Goku? Yeah, I'm Super Saiyan Son Goku. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you wanted me to do it for like the movie. How are you doing, dude? Uh, I mean, how are you? Yeah. Hi, how are you? Uh, can you write something funny on here, too? Like something Goku would say? Oh, um. Or, like, or in sign it, too. Just like. Uh, what would Goku say? Um, like, I don't know. Food? I don't know. Ah, uh, oh, gosh. Okay. Uh, yes. A warrior must control Eric, his... Eric, ha me hi! You're very welcome, dude. Thank you, sir. Let's go. Yeah. There you go. Appreciate it. I mean, Thank you, you. Can you send the... The poster? Yeah. For, for you? Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Sure. There you go, Thank sir. You. Have a good day. This is a retrospective 25 years of Dragon Ball Z. What's the deal with that shit? <laughs> <laughs> it was a different time back then. <laughs> it was a different time. This is a time machine where they already legalized gay marriage, and you yeah. and Kyle got married. Yeah. <laughs> this, is a, this is a forbidden love that was never meant to happen. Um, a love between a man and his really colorful shirt. Um, I somehow misplaced mine, although Kyle seems to have held on to his. Yes. Quite a bit. Uh, Kyle does. I almost like all of the <laughs> So this is a photo from 1997, maybe or something like that. Um, Chris and uh, Kyle Aberger, who was the narrator as well as uh, Team Goan, Team Goan, yeah. Adult Goan. Um, so really, it's crazy. You guys don't realize how special this weekend is because in Japan, April 20th. Uh, you, in fact, had the different music back then, too, <laughs> and um, that's when you had the different soundtrack with uh, Bruce Faulkner and his mustache. Yeah. <laughs> I really just wanted to include this photo because of his mustache. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Uh, but you looked like you had a pretty lively porn career back then. Yes. yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, I think he's editing one of his films right there. That's probably it. <laughs> um, so back then, before Dragon Ball is what it is now, we had a very different take on the soundtrack and the kind of hard rock style. What do you guys think made that music so, you know, resounding with our fans back then? The, the original Faulkner music? Yeah. You know, I don't, I, I, have, I have yet to figure that out because I, 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 
I don't know. I think, <laughs> I think people I have think a, I would believe that people have a strong connection with the Faulkner music in the same way that they have a strong connection with us as, as the actors on this show because you know we, we aren't the original cast, they're, they're Japanese, but we are one step closer to that and we sure. are, we've been attached to these Dragon Ball Z memories that people have, just the music and, and the acting and everything that goes into it. So I think that people just, you know, they remember that. Wait a second, wait a second, I'm having a moment. So a moment, usually when I have a moment, which I just now dubbed it that. Those it moments means, took a long time. Yeah, because I'm about to explain something. So when I first got on Dragon Ball Z, and it has to do with this in a way, I have a friend of mine who's a very, very smart guy, he's been in men since we were kids, and he was working on his doctorate in biology, and we sat down and analyzed, I was like tripping out of the fact that so many kids were, uh, and hearing my work and Chris's work on the show, and I was I was laying in bed, and I just kind of laying dealing with the gravity of that. I'm like, wait, their brains are knitting together as they're growing. Their brains are forming five, six, seven, ten years old, and my voice is in there with what they're watching while they're part of their formation. And I was completely overwhelmed with like, I was completely like, oh my god, that's totally scary. And now you're all here in adults. <laughs> <laughs> Great feeling, it's just a weird one. <laughs> so kicking back, um, at this point, 1997 actually, is when uh, the dub moved back to, moved to Texas for the first time. And uh, casting actually began, uh, and your younger selves... Uh, uh, yes. That's what I was trying to eat, Mike, and <laughs> Sean to become who I am today. And, and that's when my, my headshot guy was taking pictures of me outside and the sun was beaming into my eyes. It was, it's hilarious. I was using a lot more hair group back then. Um, go ahead. So this is the, yeah, go ahead. This is, this is your guys' plan. <laughs> uh, just talking a little bit about the first time you guys even interacted with Dragon Ball Z. No one even really knew what it was. It was kind of a blind thing for everyone to get on, get on board with this back in 1997. Mike McFarlane there, uh, voice of uh, Master Roshi, was one of the original <coughs> cast from 97. Um, what was that like? And what, how has that changed from seriously just not even knowing what Dragon Ball Z was, jumping on a project, and seeing where it went? Well, it's, it's probably important to say, since this is a retrospective panel, that a few tiles ago he was talking about the Canadian dub of the show. And that was something that was very difficult for the, those of us on the original, like the American cast, to deal with at the time, because panels weren't like this. In 1997 and 98, it would be in a room like a 15th of this size, and there would be four people in the room. And they don't would, like you. They would raise their hand and they go, do you guys have any questions? Go, yeah, why'd you guys change the music? I, it wasn't my decision. Why'd you change the voices? Well, I'm one of the new actors, so it's kind of an odd question to ask that. Like, <laughs> why'd they change the script? Like, dude, these are really complicated answers. Uh, and we would do the best we could, so, like our first experiences going to conventions was nothing like this, and so this is making up for all of the horrible times we had. Like, definitely, yes. definitely. And, and I personally went out of my way. I, I had such a pet peeve on voices changing on shows I watched, and when they switched Ronald McDonald when I was a kid, I was furious. Um, <laughs> so they changed the Dukes of Hazard too, and it yeah, oh, that didn't work either. I was at voices on at the same time. I was working really hard when I first got cast. I would take uh, old videotapes of Ian Corlett and Peter Columbus's work, and I would try to match it. And really, I didn't want anybody to know. And early on, I did fool one of my closest friends. He goes, yeah, they, they, they uh, of course, Dragon Ball. And I go, yeah, I, I kind of do. Um, I, I didn't tell him I was in it. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, they changed all the voices with Goku's voice. And I go, no, they changed Goku's voice, too. And he's like, oh, really? He goes, yeah, how do you know? And I go, because I'm playing Goku. And he's like, oh, they call my best friend. Um, so it was cool, that it, that it was important to me to give you guys continuity, but at some point, I felt like as an actor, I had to own the part, and that oh, yeah. actually happened for me during, literally during the first Super Saiyan transformation, Fighting Frieza, and I, after that day, I didn't listen to any more tapes, I'm like, I'm done, this is mine, I own this, uh, and, and I, I'm gonna make Goku my own uh, as an actor from back then on. Back in those early days, uh, dubbing anime was something that very few people did, and 
there weren't a lot of dub actors in Dallas. We were talking about this on the Twitch cast, like yeah. just a few seconds. We are actually live on Twitch right now. Oh, so oh we're on Twitch up. again. Yes. Up, Twitch. Don't get bored. <laughs> Stay with us. Uh, at the time, there were there were only about 11, 11 or twelve actors on the entire cast list. That's all we we, we called in thousands of people, held so many auditions trying to find the cast for the, wow. the for this Dragon Ball dub, and we ended up finding. Maybe around eleven people that were that were good, <laughs> and that's why I ended up playing Vegeta and Piccolo and Yamcha. As the voice director for the show, a lot of people like, why did you why did you cast yourself in so much stuff? It was out of pure necessity because at that time we were racing to get it on Toonami, which I imagine <laughs> you might talk about in a minute. Tsunami hits, Dragon Ball Z basically launches this, this entire platform of show, which again is back, and Dragon Ball Z is back on Tsunami. Yeah. Yeah! So, uh, did you guys see when the, what was the difference from before working on it, uh, before Tsunami, and post Tsunami? Well, <coughs> it, it, okay. Before, and it's not really, for me, it's not post, before and after Toonami. For me, it's like, when you first got on the show, and even after I got on Toonami, which was extraordinarily helpful, it was like, oh, cool, oh, that's awesome, you're great. Oh, wow, I'm a big fan. Now it's after 16 or whatever plus years, it's changed from being treated like it's cool that you're on a TV show to you're some kind of freaking legend. And it's like, oh my god, you're not, and it's so <laughs> gratifying, it's so flattering. And I noticed in the last four or five years, I go to conventions, it's like, a lot of we're not worthy, which is you're worthy. Trust me, you're very worthy. worthy. Very worthy. I'm not worthy. And 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 a lot of like, and I didn't really know what that felt like, and I'm certainly not comparing myself to him because he is so far above me. As I did a, 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 a I got to record a Scooby Doo episode with Frank Welker, and I cried before I went to the session, and was trying to stop myself from crying. Like, is this what kids feel like when they meet me now? And it, and it was, I was well, again overwhelmed, and it's infused in your brain. I'm like, ah. Uh, and if somebody wants to, somebody wants to throw it off, but on the other hand, it's, it's probably the best feeling in the world as an actor. Um, so that, I hope that answers the question, Justin. Yeah. Just we as used to my long-winded answers, I think. We actually had our first ever cast party, and it only, you know, there were only maybe 20 people in the cast at that point, when it got on Toonami, and seeing it on TV for the first time was just, just like, what? My voice is there! Oh, I walked into a Target, Target. And all the TVs were playing Dragon Ball Z, and I'm on my voice <laughs> booming across Target, and I'm flipping out, like, ah, just <laughs> out. Did you have a weird moment with, like, somebody playing with the, the Dragon Ball toy? Yeah, there was a toy, they took my voice and put it in, and it was punching back Goku, you blow up doll, and you punch it, and he says, I will not let you beat me! And I am going to win this fight! And I turn around the corner. emotional guy. Uh, and uh, I, I go over to the corner and some kids punch you Goku. Now the funny story behind this is that summer we were doing a family reunion because my grandmother was getting older and we were worried about losing her and, and she's uh, passed on, rest her soul. And and I, I love her dearly and she got to see my work. But my mom decided she wanted to show, bring some videotapes but she wanted to bring that damn punching bag on an 800 mile drive to Iowa. Now that thing does not have an off switch. It was not packaged well. No, and, and I'm, you know, deflated it, but every time we hit a bump, we're in the, I will not let you beat me! All the way there. I am so sick of hearing that, even to this day. But yeah, all the way to... to this, it's the same bad packaging problem with the Vegeta toy, because my mother got that punchy bag. I think it was to let out some aggression. And, uh, <laughs> but that box was funny, because if you bump the box, you go, Is that all you have? <laughs> Is that all you have? The mom's like, So as we continued with uh, the shows being broadcast on television, you know, mass popularity, but it's over. So I mean, what did this do for your careers, respectively? I mean, starting over the whole thing, just, just ending Dragon Ball. Like, what did completing Dragon Ball Z do for your career? Do for my career? It didn't do anything for my career necessarily, as much as it made me not have to fly back to Texas so I could work more in New York. But, um, and what's to, to better answer the question, I mean, I wouldn't have a career without Dragon Ball Z. It's my That's first audition. 
And uh, I was able to parlay that into moving to New York and uh, meeting people, and it opened doors for me to work on all the other shows I've worked on since then. Um, so Dragon Ball Z ending didn't really do much, except I was sad, but kind of relieved because I wouldn't have to scream all the time. Um, but I, I definitely, and I was, I was excited when Kai came back, especially because uh, when, when, when we started doing that, because uh, it was uh, going to be, well, we'll get to that in a second. But Chris, what about you? I'm di digressing. No, 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 it's fine. Um, Dragon Ball Z has profoundly affected all of the Dallas like creative industry. Oh, yeah. it, Dallas is a different place now because of Funimation. There, when I remember earlier, I told you like 12 actors on the actor list. Now there's over 400, you know what I was going to say, right? Like there was over 400 people on the actor list now. I know what you wanted me to say. Um, there are, there's so many countless people have gotten like, amazing starts, including me. I don't know what I would be doing if I had not just accepted this weird opportunity to work on this Japanese show. I didn't know anything about Dragon Ball Z when I went into it. In fact, most of the guys at Funimation in the early days didn't either. <laughs> like, they barely knew about it because it wasn't the internet to research it. There were all you had was like, we had no interaction with the Japanese hardly. There was no one on staff to kind of tell us what was going on. I remember when the director, when Barry told me, when he was explaining to me what Saiyans were, he was saying what Saiyans were, like he didn't know what Saiyans were. He goes, okay, so you're a race of beings known as Saiyans. <laughs> And it's spelled S A I Y A M. And I'm like, okay, do you know what they are? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's profoundly affected everyone. I cannot believe that we're I, sitting here today. I can say I owe my life to Dragon Ball in a lot of ways. I, I, I had difficulties growing up, and I had some uh, problems. And Dragon Ball Z opened the doors for me to, to get the help I need to, to do a lot of work on myself, to, to work through a lot of things. And I know it's kind of deep or dark or whatever, but. I'm grateful because I, I was able to take that opportunity and better myself uh, in a way that, that lets me have all the wonderful things I, I have today. And I couldn't have done that without Dragon Ball Z. Sean told me yesterday, and I thought it was good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Basically, what I'm saying is that because of Dragon Ball Z, I moved to New York and spent a lot of money on therapy. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z Universe coming up. Yeah. Dragon Ball Z Universe. Pretty excited. I also voiced myself while I was listening to myself voice myself, which was one would call very erotic, but it was not. It was, it was. <laughs> and I mean, he's with Chris, you know, starting Overtron 5000, um, being able to work on all these things. I mean, Dragon Ball Z has not only been a part of your career from a talent standpoint, but from oh, a business standpoint. Business standpoint. Is like to, to exactly. let, I don't know how often I've talked about this, but I work. I started it. Funimation when there were only a handful of people there. And once Dragon Ball Z was done, once I finally finished recording all that, I I looked at my future at Funimation and I thought the only way I can kind of advance in this business is if I take my boss's job. And <laughs> so he killed him. And then I killed him. <laughs> it is hot. <laughs> and I absorbed his powers. No, I um, <laughs> But I, I had a, a sudden epiphany too. I, I realized that my father was a gamer. He was a terrible gamer, but he was a gamer nonetheless. And he always bought us every game system. And you should have watched him play first person shooters. He was this like OCD guy. He'd walk through a door, auto save, quick save. And he walked down the hallway and he'd quick save again because he hated having to start anything over again. Um, but I realized that after we did our first Dragon Ball game, it was Dragon Ball Z Budokai, I realized. I would love to do this every day. I loved working on Dragon Ball, but man, I really loved like working on the games was just so cool. And I really, I really took to that. So I left Funimation and started a, a, a studio in Dallas called Okratron 5000, and it's now 10 years old. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. And so yeah, I've been I've been working closely with Funimation even since I left because a lot of the a lot of the guys who still work at Funimation, like one of the heads of the department at Funimation in the production department was my studio engineer. And his name is Justin Cook. The voice of Fuse oh. Game. Yeah, the voice of Fuse Game. Yeah! Oh, yeah. Yes. Super Boo. Yeah, and Super Boo. He's a talented voice actor. Super, right. Just imagine that Super Boo is the head of production at Funimation. <laughs> <laughs> Let that sink in. I don't know what voice he does with that. I can't remember which one he does over there, but um, go ahead, sorry. No, that was it. <laughs> so yeah, um, you know, we again thought Funimation was gonna be over. Like, hey, uh, I'm gonna come retire and make a movie. <laughs> and we're like, okay. 
And then this summer he's like, oh, I'm gonna make another movie. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, you know, hopefully, you know, yeah. won't die before he stops making We'll see where it goes. <laughs> but uh, right here, here's a, uh, the difference, you know, you guys seen with Kai, this was a different experience because we actually had to go back and re-dub everything uh, because it was a new edit. Uh, here's the trailer for Dragon Ball Z Kai. They wouldn't go there. <laughs> So uh, that was a really, that was then, now, the biggest event that we've ever thrown yeah. from a red carpet perspective. It was crazy. Uh, we had the, again, Japanese voice of Goku. Yeah, the president, well, one of the presidents. Shueisha was, was there. there. Toei was there. We had dinner with, it was unbelievable. The, the, what was crazy to me about it was like, it was unprecedented in that Japan was like, we, they were not really aware of how big it was here. And I remember having dinner sitting next to Masako and, and the, the executives from Shuisha and Toei, and they were like, they were telling us the translator how impressed they were. And I told them, because of this room, it's, you know, in rooms like it, that's the tip of the iceberg, guys. That, you think that was big? That was big. But it's like a giant, super giant spirit bomb. That was translated. Oh. Like, they were very, <laughs> very, 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 they were definitely were impressed with that. Um, and what was shocking to me, and I think it's unprecedented in, in Funimation's history, and I think in anime dub history, that they, they brought the cast together and had a world premiere before they released it in Japan, in America, which says a lot about your fandom and your support, because they're so impressed with what happened with Battle of Gods. Like, well, we're gonna do this in America now, because of what you guys come out and see, and what you, the fact that you come out and see it, you know what I'm saying? And so they showed up because of you guys. I mean, that's pretty damn impressive. It's never happened in anime history before, ever. And uh, it was really, really, truly exciting. <laughs> so, uh, this summer, uh, I do have the Japanese trailer for you guys to check out here if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, it's, it's completely in Japanese, not subtitled or anything. So you, but really, you don't need to say anything. Most of you speak Japanese, Japanese, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> So let's check out the new movie trailer for uh, Dragon Ball Z Resurrection F. My, my, one of my favorite scenes is probably the scene where uh, Vegeta tricks Goku during the Majin Saga and uh, knocks Goku out when it looks like Goku has finally convinced Vegeta to, you know, uh, not do this Majin thing and then he clocks him in the back of the head and takes off. That's kind of a good scene. Yeah, I've been saying that for years. That's my favorite part. The series... I it. No, 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 it's okay. <laughs> I, I think you only realized that their relationship was important recently. I did, like, in the last few weeks, actually. <laughs> but uh, I, that's always been my favorite part of the series, the Majin Vegeta stuff, the, uh, uh, the fight, the epic fight between Vegeta and Goku was uh, incredible. That was my absolute favorite part of the voice. Now you can Thank go you. ask his oh, I hear you're speak. Up. oh, I don't remember.